I am going to start with asking everyone to raise their hand. If you have two hands, please raise one. If you have one hand, please raise one. I'm going to ask if you have run an adult summer reading program to put your hand down. Every time I do this, I've been doing this for three years, the size gets longer. Now, how many of you put your hand down because you're tired? <laughs> if you have not run an adult summer reading program, your hand is up, right? If you are going to convince your coworkers to run a summer reading program for adults, your hand is still up, right? Excellent. So you're my audience <laughs> of non-participants that I'm going to convince to go back to your libraries and run adult summer reading programs. And to start, we're going to talk about programs for adults to run with your summer reading program as an ancillary program to support the, the main program. So one idea is to have uh, take your book club on a travel of uh, a tour of the United States. One such tour could be starting in New England with Mark Twain's Roughing It, which travels from New England to California. Next, reading White Fang by Jack London, which will take your readers from California up to Alaska. Then read Into the Wire, Wild by Jack Krakauer, which will take you from Alaska to Montana. He goes from Alaska to Montana the second trip to Alaska, the third trip he doesn't return from. So, as, From Montana, you can go to Seattle with uh, Shadowcatcher by Marion Wiggins. From Seattle to Nevada, you can travel with the Lone Ranger and Tonto Fistfight in Heaven and get back to the East Coast with The Lightning Thief, because adults like to read teen books too. Or take an international tour Start when in London with Midnight's Children by Sam Rushdie. Then head over to Indonesia with Eat, Pray, Love. From Indonesia, head up to Hawaii with Larry McMurtry's Paradise. From Hawaii, head back to Korea with uh, Honolulu by Ellen Brannart. From Korea to Japan, you, you've got your, all your travelers with you, right? It's a seven week program, one book per week. By the time you're in Korea, they're all with you. They're ready to go to Japan with Adjust Your Life by Cheng Ra Lee. From Japan to uh, Sweden with The Thousand Autumns of Jacob de Zoot by David Mitchell. And if you still have your readers with you, jump from Sweden to Norway and read The Man from Beijing, which will take you back to China or Japan or London to make a full circle of the planet. Another idea is to create a collaborative display for your adults. Have a paper map up in the library, use some very cheap push pins, and have your adults mark where their book is currently set. The book that they're reading is set in a certain country. Have them put an author name and a short review on the map, and you can have a collaborative book recommendation of reading from around the world. You can explore one city in depth. Take one city, find all the novels that are set in that city, and read them. Um, one example is Los Angeles, where I live. You can read I Am Legend by Richard Matheson. You can read a lot of Michael Connelly books. You can read Inherent Vice by Thomas Pynchon, because how many of us like Pynchon novels? <laughs> yeah, I thought so. Or The Crying of Lot 49 by Pynchon, if you need two options for Los Angeles. Um, there are a lot of uh, fiction crime novels set in Los Angeles, and I hear Los Angeles has a little bit of a true crime problem. I'm not exactly sure what that's all about, but you can pick up some true crime novels set in Los Angeles. You can do this with any city. There is also a series of books coming out, uh, or that have come out, uh, L.A. Noir or San Francisco Noir, New Orleans Noir, a whole bunch of mysteries set in different cities. Another idea that has uh, built on the teen program and the tween program is to bring food into the library. You can have a program where your patrons or your library staff bring in dishes that have a strong cultural significance or are the national dish for a certain country. Bring in a true Hungarian goulash. There is a such thing as, a, it's not just a miscellaneous dish, it's a Hungarian goulash. Bring in a paella, if you're brave enough to try a Spanish dish. Uh, have your patrons compare and contrast the difference between German and Polish sausages. Have a kimchi sampler. Because there's more than one type of kimchi, right? You all know that. Try and bring in an Italian dish that's not pizza or pasta. Does anyone know of a, an American, a solely American dish that can be brought in? Oh, Pardon? Indian fry bread. Indian fry bread is the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> Penny, Penny said chop suey, which is uh, American, but it was used to Chinese cooking. I was hoping someone would say hamburger. It's not. It's not from hamburger either. It's not from Germany. 
Yeah, so Indian fry bread, any other ideas? <laughs> Buffalo chicken wings is a good idea, but that's uh, based on, yeah. ice cream cone is uh, English? Anything deep fried is a, a cooking method that was developed in other continents. Cornbread is another good one. It's really hard to find a truly American, solely American. A hokey. I was hoping someone would uh, say salmon, because uh, uh, Native Americans in the West Coast use salmon a lot, but salmon is also a European dish. Turkey. So you've got a few ni nice ideas. The way to cook a turkey that's solely American, though, is kind of hard. You've got a lot of different ways to cook it, not one that's necessarily solely American. A few other ideas for programs is to have your adults come in and write a tribal log. I have found that I am my favorite subject. Your patrons might also be their favorite subject. So invite them to write about their travels. Another idea with the travel log is to have a local representatives from a historical society come in and talk about how to best preserve photographs or travel documents. Mm -hmm. Something like airplane tickets and postcards that they pick up on the travel, how to organize those so that it'll last for a long time. A fun program that I've had at another, uh, one of my libraries was to listen to an ecotourist. If you type ecotourist into your favorite browser, you will get lots of results of companies that send people across the world. They will be happy to send you someone to talk about their travels. At my library, we had someone that had traveled to South America, the Caribbean, Africa, and the South Pacific, and gave a fantastic program about the animals that she was charged to help during her ecotourism, and fun facts about the places that she visited. Another idea of having a pen pal is to share stories with other libraries. At the Acton Aguadulce Christopher Colombo Brevador Library, we've had uh, representatives head to Acton, England. With that on envoy that went to Acton, Eng England, they took the history of Acton, California with them and presented it to the library in Acton, England. That history of Acton it starts with the founders of Acton deciding to name their city Acton after the place of their birth. It was an interesting history. Portland, Oregon libraries can share stories with Portland, Maine, because Portland, Oregon is named after Portland, Maine. Uh, libraries in Paris, Texas can share stories with libraries in Paris, Idaho, and figure out why their cities are named Paris. Does anyone know? I would like to figure out why they named them Paris. Alas, <laughs> ask a question to a room full of librarians. I don't get an answer. This is, a, <laughs> this is a good way to tie into a local history program. Figure out what your local place names were named for. Tie it into genealogy. If you've got people who have lived in your city for a long time, do th does their name have any representation in street names, in place names? I tout. Our amazing national park system. Have a local, your local, your nearest national park come and talk at your library. Talk about what the park represents, why it's important, why it's important to protect what's in that park. If you don't have a national park close by, have a state park or a county park come in and talk about their assets. These are uh, great assets that we have for our, na our nation, and we should be proud of them and share them with our patrons. If you don't have someone from the National Park come visit, have people who have visited the park come and do a slideshow of what they saw at a park that they visited and have a, a nice program of everyone sharing stories about their favorite vacations. Set up a National Park display in your library, a nice uh, visual about what our national parks are and where to visit them. The movie series was already mentioned. So I'm gonna have a tour of the world through movies. A few quick ideas is to show movies from one from every continent. If you are showing movies uh, on Africa, you can show Out of Africa. What are some other Africa movies? African Queen, Constant Gardener, and Invictus, and The Gods Must Be Crazy, all fun movies. If you are traveling to South America, show Evita, Medicine Man, or the sci-fi classic Dr. Cyclops. It will bore everyone to tears. It's such a fun movie. It's amazing. If uh, Asia, Europe, and North America are pretty obvious uh, for Australia and New Zealand, you've got Australia, Lord of the Rings, Eagle versus Shark, uh, that Dundee guy, 
had some movies. For Antarctica, you have Eight Below, Encounters at the End of the World, the X-Files movie that was set in Antarctica, and The Thing. The Thing was really fun. Be sure to check your movie licensing options for that. Another program for adults is to explore your local area. Be a tour guide for your community. Put together a walking map of your local points of interest. Be sure to include the library. The library is interesting, even if you don't think so, right? Be sure to uh, highlight local areas that are of interest, public art, um, interesting architectural uh, features of your local buildings. And another way to explore your local areas, broaden the scope from a walking tour to having representatives from uh, local recreation areas. Uh, for most of California, the Pacific Crest Trail is close by. Have someone who has hiked the entire Pacific Crest Trail come and talk or have someone who has climbed to the highest mountain nearest your library come and talk and tell you how and why they did that and how you can also do it. Location-based social media games are becoming more popular and you can use them to have a, a nice game for your adults. One is called Layer. It's an augmented reality app. When you hold up your phone with that app running, you point it at something and on the screen, it's, I'm pointing at Penny right now and I'm clicking on her and she has now, all of her books are listed right there. If I move it around to different points of interest, you can click on the different things the phone is pointing at and find nice interesting things. Um, I was gonna set up one for our library to have a nice guided tour of what you know, is it in our library. There is a slight learning curve on creating an augmented reality app for Layer. Uh, you need to know some PHP and MySQL, so that's uh, something to be aware of. Another one is to have a scavenger hunt using QR codes. You can learn about those with a quick uh, search on QR code. Or you can use a traditional scavenger hunt with leaving notes and books or having something at the front desk that will lead patrons to other books and have them explore the library or explore the local community. Um, using QR codes or layer will leave your adults that don't have the appropriate smartphones in the dust, so be aware of that. And thank you very much. Thank you.